All right, another little game that this Rasmussen guy likes to play is the Greek game, the Greek scholar game. And uh, the, it's all throughout the book, and I just kind of flipped it open just as looking here, page 228. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Here we have page 228. The truth is confirmed by the Aorist Indicative Ebasileus, or Leosus, whatever, the Austrian Revelation, blah, 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 blah. The Aorist Indicative signifies that the action of Christ's entrance into the condition of his reign, blah, 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 blah. Okay, you say, what? The, the what now? <laughs> See, what these guys do when they can't just go with the plain text of the King James Bible, they can't just read the King James Bible and, and just preach it as it is. They have to uh, do a special little something. Let me tell you what the Greek is. The Aorist Indicative or the, the uh, you know, whatever. And they get into all these really technical terms. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to put you down because you don't understand those things. And what they do is they end up holding up two authorities. You have, quote unquote, the Greek over here. This is a Textus Receptus, by the way. And you have the King James Bible over here. Now, if there are two different authorities, what do you need? Someone to interpret the two different authorities. Ah, uh-oh. But if there's one authority, you can hold this thing and you can read it and you can understand it. The Lord can teach you. The Lord can show you what the truth is. And that's what I've been doing for years and years and years and years and years. I've been telling people, this book, the King James Bible, it's the authority in your life. You're never going to hear me trying to impress you with my knowledge of the Greek. You know why? Because I don't have much knowledge of the Greek. I know a little bit, but I don't waste time with this thing. Why? Let me show you why. Can you read any of that? You say, yes, I can. I'm a Greek scholar. Okay. Um, can you go out on the street and show this to somebody and show them how to get saved? No. How many sermons have been preached that have changed people's lives from this? You know what this is? This is for people that they can say, okay, this is how the Bible was originally written back in the first century. It was originally written in this Greek language, this ancient Greek language. And now you take 54 of the greatest scholars that ever lived, 47 until the whole thing was said and done, 1604 to 1611, seven years these men spent you know, three different uh, committees, one at Oxford, one at Cambridge, and the other at uh, Westminster, I think it was, or something, if I remember correctly. And they did, I think it was like seven total tests with every chapter of the Bible, every book of the Bible. I mean, everything that was tested and tested and tested and tested seven years and refined and refined and refined and perfected so that we could have this King James Bible. And yet these, these types of heretics right here will say, well, the King James Bible is God's word, but uh, you know, you also need me, the Greek scholar, to tell you because you're just ignorant laity. Well, you ought to read back there in the book of Revelation where it talks about the deeds of the Nicolaitans and God says, which thing I hate. When you have somebody trying to rule over the people, the common man, you know, and, and try to keep them down on a level where they can't attain unto a certain level of greatness. You know, like saying the huge, you know, Ras, Ronald, or Roland Rasmussen pastors the huge Faith Baptist Church. Huh? <laughs> you know, what is he? He's a Nicolaitan. He's trying to offer different uh, contradicting authorities and set himself up as the final authority in the life of the people who are reading his book and trying to impress you into thinking you're just down there and he's way up there. See, again, a big problem with this whole system.